Right learners, welcome back and in today's video we are going to be talking about working with formula. Now when working with formula you can either substitute your values first, then solve for the unknown or you can rearrange your formula making the unknown value the subject of your formula and then substitute. So let's just look at an example um, to see the different ways in which we can do this. So they want us to evaluate n if, and here's the formula, t equals a plus n minus 1 d. Okay, now please remember when you deal with this, you need to remember bod mass, which is your brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. You can use estimation where possible um, to check your calculator work, just to give you a rough idea of what the answer should be. So do we know any of these things at the moment? No. So they tell us the following. T equals 12,5. A equals negative 4. All right, and then D equals 1,5. So if we now throw that into our formula, we just substitute these things and we say, okay, well, T, that's going to be 12,5 equals A. Do we have A? Yes. Um, a, we have it as negative 4. And I'm going to put that in brackets so we don't get confused when we need to implement this formula and calculate. Uh, plus, and then it's N minus 1. We obviously don't have N. That's what we're looking for. And D, we've got as 1,5. Okay. So you can see the difference between the formula that they've given us we've put in our substitutions and that's what it ends up looking like now one of the things i can do is to i can move certain things from the right over to the left but then they have to change so for example my negative four if i move that over it will become positive four so then it will read as 12 comma 5 plus 4 equals n minus 1 1 comma 5. now i can divide this 1,5 by 1,5, um, you know, to eliminate this, but then I've got to do it to the other side as well. So if I do that, then I've got to do it on this side as well. That gets eliminated to 1. And now I've got a formula that reads 12,5 plus 4 over 1,5 equals n minus 1. Okay. Now I can do exactly the same thing that I've done. Okay, I can take this minus one and I can move it over to this side. Um, it'll then become a positive, but let's just let's just finish this here quickly. So this will be 16,5 over 1,5 equals n minus one. And that answer comes to 11 and what are we going to do we're going to move our negative 1 over so we're going to have 11 plus 1 equals n and therefore n equals what 11 plus 1 that is 12. All right, so another way we can look at it is to is to rearrange everything where instead of having it you know as t equals um, our formula we want it as n equals our formula so I'm going to leave T where it is and just, just bear with me. So I've got T over there. I then want to bring over my A. So that's going to become minus A. Then remember what I did in the previous example. I had to divide this number by itself. So it's going to be divided by D. Because remember I'm dividing by D on that side. And I've got to bring it over and do the same on this side. That'll give me equals n minus 1 and then it, remember in order to bring that over that's got to be a positive so then my formula ends up reading t minus a over d plus 1 equals n and now I can process my entire formula I can say well okay 12 comma 5 minus minus 4 divided by 1 comma five and then whatever that answer is plus one will give me what n is 
this will give me an answer of 11 plus 1 equals n therefore n equals 12. Here's another formula that gets used to find the speed of an object. The speed of an object, if we're looking for speed, is determined by the distance divided by the time. Okay, so they give us, I'm just going to use one or two examples. Um, one says calculate the average speed of a car that was traveling. Um, our example says calculate the average speed a car was traveling at if it covered a distance of 1350 kilometers in 11.5 hours now do we have the speed no that's what we're looking for do we have the distance yes we do do we have the time yes we do so all we've got to do is divide one into the other and we end up getting an answer of 117.39 and that'll be kilometers per hour. That's our speed. Let's look at another example. What distance will an airplane fly if it travels at a constant speed of 635 kilometers per hour for 13 hours All right we go back to our formula do we have the speed yes we do so that's 635 do we have the distance no we don't the distance is what we want do we have the time we've got 13 hours so we have that okay so what are we going to do well we do something very simple we take our 635 and we actually multiply it by 13 and that'll give us an answer of 8,255. Now, guys, I know it seems like a huge number, uh, but that is correct because, and how do we test this? We test it by taking this distance, because remember, this is now kilometers. I mean, think about it. An aeroplane flying at 635 k's an hour for 13 hours, that is very plausible. Okay? We can simply take that amount over there, divide it by 13, and we should get 635. 635 multiplied by 13 and there you can see there's my answer okay so it should work backwards as well 